Hey, do you do cardio? Huh? Do you do cardio? Oh, you mean 10 reps instead of nine? No, I mean like stamina, endurance training. Oh, I didn't even say that. Yeah, that stuff, I do that, yeah. yeah. Hey, John. Yeah. Why would you use this cardio equipment? This is great because it doesn't really have much impact on my joints, which saves me from, you know, having joint pain if I'm doing a lot of heavy stuff. Why wouldn't you do it? I wouldn't really go ham on this before legs later today, you know? Sure. Because I need my legs for leg day. Nice. My groin. Ah, because I like it and it's fun. <laughs> and it's training skills at the same time as getting cardiovascular exercise. Why wouldn't I do this? You gotta be mentally there. It's a little different for, say... This one's great because you don't have any of the eccentric force, which is like the downward part of a squat. That makes you sore. So I'm, it's just like step, 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 step. It won't make you very sore. So, and I'm outside, it's nice. It'll exhaust you, so if you're trying to strategize your energy levels. I learned this one from John in 2000, oh God, seven? <laughs> Stretching can be done combined with cardio. You're moving around a lot for like 10 minutes, right? I do it in the morning. Uh, be careful for an injury. Um, if you don't have any stretches to do, I wouldn't do it. But the Juji has tons of stretches in his book, Legendary Flexibility for Dynamics. So maybe just like use those. I've been jump roping for a long time. And it's good if you have a good jump rope. I like doing this one because it's minimal, takes less space, it's fun, uh, it's good. It's good to you can do, you can modulate your heart rate easier with it with rest sets and stuff. I can't think of very many reasons why you wouldn't jump rope, honestly. Maybe if you have tendonitis or an ankle injury or, or a shoulder injury, actually, because yeah. jump roping takes a lot on your shoulders here to maintain the position. So if you got like shoulder or ankle problems, I probably wouldn't jump rope. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's good for a lot of things and bad for a lot of things. <laughs> yep. I'll start with the bad. Yesterday, I decided to do a high intensity sprints after our hamstring workout on 100 grams of carbs and 1500 calories. So let's not do that. Incline, walking on treadmill, really good low intensity. And you can look at while you're doing it. <laughs> Have you? So rowing is not too great if you want to do longer forms of cardio, but it is really good to get some upper body cardio in because a lot of the cardio stuff we've been doing is lower body, lower body, lower body, lower body, lower body. And this really gets your back and arms moving. It's also not good if you have tendonitis. That's why I have this, these alternative handles because last year we had some arm pain and I switched it out for this and it helped it out a lot. Here, catch this. Ah. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, hey. <laughs> we, oh, oh, I'm cardio. We're in a small arms repair shop, which is also the, uh, the cardio station here. Small cardio repair shop. Juji, yeah. why are you trying to do cardio while you grow? I feel good. I mean, I think it increases my appetite beyond when I'm burning, so it helps me continue to eat more food. Hmm. You know, that helps. Did someone suggest it to you? Uh, I just, my, my coach Dorian wants me to do cardio in the mornings, 10 minutes on the training days and 20 minutes on off days. And he knows I'm trying to grow. So, but I don't really know like the science behind it. I think I know somebody that could explain the science a little better than we could. Yeah. I think I'll just stay in my lane. Lane, lane, bio lane. You've probably seen him on Joe game. Sort of a placebo effect. That's possible. A lot of people spouting shit out there. Who are you gonna trust? It's BioLane. PhD in nutritional sciences. Powerlifter, bodybuilder. One shows in different alliances. It's BioLane. Hey, Gigi and Tom. Great question. So, this is something that I get asked pretty frequently. You know, how much cardio should I do if I'm looking to build muscle? And there's been various schools of thought on this. Um, I've been of various minds of this at different times in my own bodybuilding career. It's great to build muscle and have a great physique, but nobody wants to die young. There actually was a recent publication in JAMA, which is one of the best medical journals there is, and they showed in a 10-year study looking at all-cause mortality that essentially people who did more steps per day had much lower all-cause mortality. 
And it was a very big difference. Going from about 2,000 steps per day to about 8,000 steps per day cut in half the mortality rate. Now, I do want to put all this in context. This is an all-cause mortality study, which has a lot of confounding variables insofar as like, you know, somebody could get hit by a car and that counts towards uh, the statistics because it's all cause. If you're a bodybuilder and you're wondering how much cardio should I do, keep in mind that you're already active. You're already working out. So do you need to get 12,000 steps? It's hard to tell because this study was not done in people who train. Probably a good idea to do some activity outside of your normal training sessions. In general, my recommendations are either pretty slow and low impact or pretty short and high intensity. You're not gonna have any negative impacts on your recovery from lifting. Um, it doesn't take much energy. Uh, you're getting in steps. So there's a benefit there. The downside is it takes a really long time. So if you wanna accumulate, say, you know, um, 5,000 steps from walking, for example, about two and a half miles, which is gonna take me mm, probably around 40 to 50 minutes. So it's, it's a good period of time. The benefits of high intensity are that you get in and you get out and it's quick and you get pretty much the same benefits from the low intensity, probably plus some added cardiovascular benefits. The downside is it probably has a little bit more negative interference with your strength training. So there's what's called concurrent training where you are doing weightlifting with some form of cardiovascular exercise. We know that there is a little bit of a negative interference in terms of building muscle and strength when it comes to certain forms of cardiovascular exercise. And what seems to probably be the worst is something like jogging. And the reason we think jogging is probably the worst is that you know, to get in the amount of activity you want to get in, you're still doing it for a relatively long period of time, probably you know, 15 to 30 minutes, but it's also high impact. So you have repeated um, eccentric loading of the muscles, which causes uh, muscle damage. Muscle damage is not a prerequisite for growth and can actually impair growth in certain situations. Sore, so you're not as uh, good during your resistance training sessions. So in general, I advise against not doing much jogging for cardio, especially for bigger bodybuilders, larger bodybuilders, once you get above you know, 250 pounds, many of them start to have digestive issues, uh, such, as such as reflux. Now, doing short walks after a meal can actually assist with reflux. When you do short walks, it actually helps with um, the movement of food down your GI, and this is beneficial for quite a few people who do get gastric reflux. For people who have difficulty eating enough in the off season, for those of you who are getting up in that four or 5,000 calorie range, maybe you have very fast metabolisms or a very active job, uh, and just have difficulty getting all your food down, you know, short periods of cardio to stimulate appetite anecdotally seem to have helped some bodybuilders. So if you're sedentary and you start doing a little bit of cardio, um, you actually get less hunger based on the research because it seems that exercise sensitizes you to satiety signals. Once you've gotten to a normal level of activity, adding more activity seems to bring your appetite back up. So as a bodybuilder who's already training, you know, you know an hour or two a day, um, if you're adding cardio on top of that, theoretically you should probably get a little bit of a appetite increase. Your expenditure is not outpacing your appetite, meaning maybe you get, maybe you're somebody who has enough trouble packing calories down, maybe doing a little bit of cardio gives you a little bit of appetite, but it's such a little stimulation, it doesn't even make up for the calories you burn doing the cardio. I actually prefer step tracking as a way of tracking cardio compared to traditional, well, I'm gonna do 30 minutes today or this and that, and the reason it's just, it's just easy to be standardized. These, these watches are not very accurate for energy expenditure, but most of them are very accurate for step counts. If I know that I'm hitting 10,000 steps in the off season and I move to the you know, contest prep phase, I can just say, well, I'm gonna make sure I maintain my activity. 
I'm gonna make sure I maintain those 10,000 steps on top of the training I'm doing. That actually has meant I've been in a cut myself. That actually has meant that at certain points I've had to add in purposeful cardio to hit those 10,000 steps. Cardio is a balance. I think doing too much in the off season is probably a bad idea. Um, and too much I would define as when it gets to the point to where it starts to negatively impact your strength training and muscle gains. Doing too little is where you're doing so little that you're not getting health benefits from the cardio you could be doing. I know that was a little long. I hope it answered you guys' questions. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to let me know. I love questions like this. And uh, get cranking on those steps. Wow. Well, thanks, Lane, for explaining all that information. We could have never explained it that well. Cardio's done. This is cardio. It's going to be 10 reps. <laughs> We're doing a little chest, triceps. I'm doing a little shoulders. Today, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on in the coming week, so this will be the last uh, workout video you'll see for a oh, decade. Actually, a good amount of time. About a week, because uh, the next two are very different. Three years of DEXA measurements and a photo shoot. Woo! Ah. More weight on this than the amount of carbs I've had today. Well, that's definitely true. The last 100 gram carb day, thank the lord, bro. Yeah, the 100 gram carb thing is becoming like the tendonitis thing from last year. Yeah. So, uh, we, you're gonna be, you're gonna be garbed up now and then. But you saw it yesterday. Go. Guys, we did not film a hamstring workout in which I was dead to the world. Yeah, but you didn't complain about it because there's no, no camera filming. I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I only complain on camera. Yeah. <sighs> All right, there we go. Heart rate's going up, breath rate's going up, lungs are pumping. And pecs are being, pecs are being squeezed of the last remaining few. Let's go to the next uh, exercise. This is cardio again. Well, if it goes beyond 10 reps, it's cardio. If I start to breathe heavy, it's cardio. Actually, what is cardio? Well, Lane answered it for oh, us, right. so we don't yeah, have to explain that. I should have uh, paid attention during the class. Uh, I actually, I'm wondering, you know, I've just been doing cuts, so I can talk about my cardio, but during your cuts in the past, what have you changed for cardio? Nothing. Hmm. I think you just do it. Yeah. But I wouldn't do cardio during bulking in the past. Right. But, I mean, now, but now I, you are. But now I am, and I feel like this is the best I've ever been, honestly. Nice. Like, I think it's a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I do it now all the time. And it's a good way to start your day and just feel wrong when you don't do it. It's true. I do fast cardio every morning for the past six months and I just like wake up and, and I do it. I do a little stretching before, but I'm not that aggressive with my cardio other than that, just because I'm more aggressive with my deficit. <laughs> I don't know. I've added something new to the gym. It's on the rack, Rouge Special. Matter of dip station, how you like it? Oh, it's great. Nice. I like it, yeah. Dips are good, especially when they're angled like this. It's and a good you, angle. You know, I, I like Rouge as a, you know, if you're, if you're building a home gym, Rouge is a great route to go because they have a lot of attachments and stuff. They have so, a good ecosystem. It's, it's a yeah. really good ecosystem. I think Sornex is another one that has a good ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah, you want to look for a place that has like attachments and little add-ons and stuff. Yeah, because yeah. if you buy a rack from some of the Let's say boutique guys, the smaller guys. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's not, it's a good investment, but sometimes they don't have the things to attach to it. And yeah, and if, yeah. And if you're only going to be ever working with a space that's like the size of a, a garage or you know five hundred thousand square feet, you're going to want to make the most of it. So. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, we do have a friend here, Joe. Hey, my mom will be surprised. Will she? She'll be happy. To hear. Does she watch our videos? She does. She's oh. my biggest supporter. 67, her name is Sandy. Sandy, Sandy my okay. Biggest supporter of Improved with Joe. You're gonna do, you've been doing chess with us, but also later you're gonna help us uh, film something I am, special. I am, I am. Gonna do a special mm -hmm. surprise for y'all. Has anyone ever filmed this from this angle? Uh, <laughs> you have. <laughs> I, I definitely, no, no, you have in the past. I know that. <laughs> I just watched, I was, I'm on year 2015 of Juju's uh, rough cut and I watched you film like one one session you filmed probably 16 different angles of tips you got past the years where I was filming my crotch all the time from below Here. uh you you kept doing that through like 2016 my man I know that was, that was a good angle <laughs> one of the cool things in it is there's gonna be these mini little stories that are gonna 
pop up and one of them is the Jujimufu crotch shot, which you'll experience. And we're not going to show you that today. Oh no. Oh no. If any of these exercises are cardio, I would say this one is. <laughs> To be honest, the tricep push down. Yeah, my triceps have great uh, oxygenation capacity. Yeah, I've actually been um, blood doping just in my tricep. <laughs> just straight up live strong in it, you know? Yeah, man, your cable stack, Tom, I swear. Man. It's really heavy. Yeah, it's like I usually do it like down here on this right? exercise. I'm like way up here right now. I'm telling you, it's perfect for me to build up to. It's you know? perfect for strong people. Stronger than me. I know, we need to get stronger to, to balance out this cable stack. We've got a couple more tricep things. Okay. And I'm gonna do a lateral raise. <laughs> and then we're gonna eat some food and we've got something after that. Is that right, John? Yeah, of course. There was no real surprise. We're just walking after a meal. <laughs> 10 minute walk after a meal. We do it all the time now. Yep. After most meals, but we work out a lot. We do morning cardio, so you don't have to do it after every meal. Otherwise, you're literally doing cardio all day long, mm -hmm. which maybe not be a bad thing for some people. No, I do it after like three out of five meals. Uh, yeah, two two out of five for me. Okay, okay. It's because we did morning cardio and workout, and yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't know, but that's... Hey, there's I, a guy filming us. Yeah, and we usually know. walk faster than this, but he doesn't want to walk backwards fast. No, he's going faster. Uh, he's oh, going oh, faster, oh. so we're going faster. Okay, there we go. There the ten go. minute walk is becoming yeah. more efficient. Joe? Joe, that's Joe. my camera. That's my camera. <laughs>